Welcome everybody to day four of Be a Builder. If you're joining us new, we are going step by step to build an app from start to finish. Join us every morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time for a new video and chances to win when you share your progress. In fact, watch to the end of this video to learn what you need to share on Twitter using hashtag be a builder to win an awesome prize pack. Two lucky people will be able to win a custom builder t-shirt and a trailhead water bottle, really cute astro coasters, and surprise, a GoPro. So cool. So be sure to watch to the end and share your progress. So yesterday, we learned how to build a really great data model. For day four, we're going to learn some best practices around building awesome user experience. I'm excited to hear from principal admin evangelist Leanne Reimel and developer evangelist Heather Dykstra about how to design a, an experience that is simple, accessible, and efficient. Let's go chat with them. Thanks, Rebecca. I'm Leanne, and I'm joined today by our awesome evangelist, Heather Dixtra. Hi guys. I'm really excited today to start talking to you about how to build amazing apps. Awesome, I'm super excited too. We've been talking about how we understand what's needed in our app, how we model that data, and now we're gonna look at what it looks like in implementation and how we can design with our user's experience in mind. Yeah, let's dive in. Let's take a look. So when we jump into our demo environment, we have that data model, which is the same data model that we built out on our whiteboard. We have projects right in the middle. That's our custom object that we added. And we also have accounts that we've added via lookup field and events and tasks. Great. And those events and tasks were added automatically when we created the project object here in Object Manager. Awesome. So if we take a deeper look in Object Manager at our project, we can see what Heather's talking about, where we were able to select that we wanted to be available for reports, track activities, and even add the API name to make it accessible to our developers. Right. And so now we're looking at our fields and relationships, and these also have those API names. And you can see we've written custom ones here for start date, end date, description, and status. And that lookup field is how we created the one-to-many relationship that projects have with accounts. Now, when we created our custom object, we also added a tab, which meant that we can access it from the app launcher. It's a tab, which makes the object available, but we want to really build this with our users in mind. We want it to be an easy experience for them to get everything they need for projects, and we're going to do that by creating a brand new Project Central Lightning app. That sounds awesome. So to do that, we're going to make sure that we also give it a developer name, which again will be accessible through the API. And we can add our logo and our branding right in here to make it have a unique app experience with yellow branding, with our project logo. And on the bottom right, we can see our preview of what app will look like in the app launcher. Sweet. So we're also going to add some items to our utility bar. These are going to um, potentially be standard items or custom items. We're just going to add re recent items here. And the utility bar is great because it's everything that you want your users to be able to do no matter where they are in the app. So no matter where our users are in the app, we want them to be able to quickly access their recent accounts and their recent projects in a very intuitive way with the stocked utility bar at the bottom. But as Heather was saying, in the utility bar, you can also add custom components. So developers out there, as you're thinking about places you can surface apps, this is a great place to think about those apps or those components that are going to be available to your users throughout entire app experience. Now we're also going to add the tabs and the items that we want available for this app. So we've got a combination of our custom tab for our custom object projects, as well as some standard elements. We're going to assign it to the system administrator for now because we're still going to do some more customizations before we roll it out for our users. So when we go to the app launcher and we click in to our new project central app, we have our new logo, our new coloring, and we have our utility bar at the bottom where we can quickly view our recent projects. Now, if we dive into one of those projects, we have a few key details, all those fields that we added when we created the object. And this is the page that's available to us right out of the box when we create a custom object. This is our standard page. We have details, we have our related items, but we're gonna use the Lightning App Builder to customize this for our users and make it really intuitive for them. So right now we're adding some custom tabs. 
This way we can condense our information, put it all in that main central panel and free up some space on our page. So we're adding files and activities um, and even chatter to this center panel. Right, so tabs are a great way to control and maximize the real estate on your record pages because we can move things around the page. So we've added our files tab and that's where we're gonna use the related list single in order to break up that larger related list and just give our users files in one place. Now we're also gonna bring the chatter and activity feed over from that side panel so that we can really use this real estate in a smart and intuitive way and make that space available for additional components that we wanna add. So we've optimized our tabs here so they're really intuitive for our users. Now, Heather, you've built a custom lightning component that we can add to the page as well. Yeah, so I built this uh, photo carousel app and it's actually got admin functionality here so we can enable it to auto scroll or not. Which is a great note when you are building components to surface as many attributes as possible so your admins can customize them and use them in many different places. It makes them very reusable um, throughout your app, throughout your build. Now we can also add our path component. So this is a standard component. However, we did build a custom path for this. We did build a path um, all with clicks, but we can add the path component. And when we add the path component, this is going to help coach our users. So this is a component, a standard component that's great for increasing that user experience or benefiting the user experience or making it better because you're helping bring that coaching, reducing the places that your users have to look at for what are the steps to manage a project. You can put them right on the page. And we only want to make this visible when that page is, when that project is open. And so we're going to go ahead and set that filter there as well. So we're really ensuring that we're only seeing what they need to see on the record. So once we activate this page, we can assign it to the app as well. And when we click through, we can see this new experience for our users where they can have the access to that photo carousel. And when they close this project, the path disappears. And that's how you can build apps with user experience in mind. Back to you, Rebecca. Wow, Leanne and Heather just built out an entire app in a matter of minutes, and it looks great. Now, there was a lot of information in that demo, and I recommend watching it a couple times to really let it all sink in. But just to summarize, my first key takeaway is think about the features that make your app intuitive. Things like path and utility bar, and really whatever can make your data accessible and easy to understand. Next, incorporate UX best practices by surfacing the important information with the least amount of clicks. Um, you can do that by changing the tabs and the layout of your page. Lastly, leverage the awesome tools like Lightning App Builder and App Manager to help you with all of this. So now it's your turn. If you've been following along, you have built out your data model in your developer edition org so that you're ready to start building your app. So find App Manager and Setup, walk through that fun Lightning App Wizard, and then create a sample record and customize it using the App Builder. And if you want to go deeper on this topic, you can do that by completing the Lightning App Builder module on Trailhead. I highly recommend that you do this badge because, it, because it's also a prerequisite for the App Customization Specialist Super Badge. And for those of you who are brand new to app building, I also recommend completing the Quick Start project called Build Your First App. This will take you literally step by step what you need to do to build the app. So as you know, today is another swag day. For day three, you shared your data model with us for a chance to win. For day four, tweet us a sample record page. Now I'm assuming you're building in a DE org with sample data, but just in case, remember, do not share any sensitive um, company information or data. Um, so when you do this, Make sure you hashtag be a builder, and then you will be entered for a chance to win those awesome prizes we talked about. All right, so join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time for our next topic, ensuring great data, where we will learn what you can do to ensure data integrity in your app. See you then.